Now the stadium you see behind me doesn't look like Death Valley in Baton Rouge, but NRG Stadium here in Houston surely acted as a second home for the Tigers. We're live here on the campus of Auburn University, right in the middle of their famous Tiger Walk. Every Saints fan going to the Dome on game days have to make sure that their game day gear is right on point before they get to the Dome. Isn't that right, DePaul? 10th ranked LSU with a chance to take the Tennessee series tonight in game two. The Tigers using a 17 hit attack to wipe out the Vols 7 to 5 lead over the last three innings. Oh yeah, we're feeling good tonight, everybody. Morgan Beard here alongside John A. Lombardi. Welcome back to another edition of the Sports Desk. I'm Morgan Beard, joined alongside the best name in the business, as always, Mr. Johnny Lombardi. And now Traven Durrell and Anthony Jennings are showing what began in 2013 has carried itself over to 2014. We are live inside the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. We're in a little bit under an hour. Bayou Madness will tip off. We're here with LSU men's basketball guard Keith Hornsby at LSU's annual move-in day. Now, Keith, you're out here helping all the incoming freshmen move into their dorms here this morning. How's your experience been so far? With your SEC network analytical <laughs> skills, uh, can you break down that game and uh, show us what we're coming to expect this um, week? The 10-7 to victory over the third-ranked Ole Miss Rebels now takes its spot on the list of unforgettable LSU games as it was done in classic LSU style. Before at least one night in the Lone Star State, Kenny Hilliard was the star. For Tiger TV Sports, I'm Morgan Beard. Earning gold medals and championship belts in a martial art as demanding as Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu takes a lifetime of preparation and dedication. Unless you're Jessica Guidry. I started Jiu-Jitsu two and a half years ago. I came to this gym in October of 2011. I remember, I remember the day exactly. It was the middle of the day. I'm like, let me go check this place out. I don't know what it is. The decorated martial artist you see today first went to the Baton Rouge gym, formerly known as LA Boxing, for nothing other than just getting in shape. I was really overweight. I was 260 pounds, actually. After taking up boxing as a way to lose over 100 pounds, Gabe Miller, the owner of what is now a UFC gym, says that Guidry's changes are much more than what meets the eye. She'd come in, wouldn't look at you in the eye, would walk right past you. After a year, it was an entirely new person. She had changed completely. But the true changes came for Guidry as her curiosity got the best of her, and led her to the world of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. They had these guys in the back that I didn't really know what they did. They, they kind of smelled all the time. I'd see them at the water fountain. You know, I didn't know what they were doing. All of a sudden, we start noticing how good she was getting in Jiu-Jitsu. So we put her in a few tournaments. From that moment, it kicked off. Advanced Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu instructor Josh Mancuso also started to notice Guidry's progression. And soon, Guidry was entered into the International BJJ Federation's Houston Open, one of the largest tournaments in the area. And she just clean house. She, she destroyed everybody, submitted everybody, uh, won gold in her division, and it was really like, wow. After the Houston tournament, Guidry received yet another honor, a rare podium promotion to the Blue Belt. Average time, is, it's about two years. What did she, do? Uh, she did, what, a year? Six months. Six, six months. They said six months. I, I counted. I think it was five, but I'm not saying anything. <laughs> She's the only person I've promoted on a podium, and I've promoted every one of her belts on the podium because it's just the way that she earns it. Guidry has since been promoted to Purple Belt and is looking forward to the next step in competition at the World Championships in May. But she says it isn't the success that keeps her moving forward. I don't compete because I want to win. I compete because I like, I like testing myself. But then the sport just has so many rewards outside of it. It just makes you a better person. For Tiger TV, I'm Morgan Beard. If it looks like a Division I sport and sounds like a Division I sport, Who is X? Who is X? then it must be a Division I sport. We're not an NCAA Division I program. Except for club sports just like LSU lacrosse. But unlike volleyball and soccer, lacrosse faces a unique problem. Honestly, uh, down here not a lot of people even know what it is. But for a sport so obscure in the South, it has quite the background at LSU. Well, first of all, the history at LSU is we're actually in our 41st year playing lacrosse, and a lot of people don't realize that. Um, the difference is... The lacrosse club's tenure over the years can be attributed to passionate players, especially those from outside the state. If we didn't have guys coming from up north wanting to play, we probably would have ceased to exist. Up there, everyone plays it, everyone loves it, and just everyone does it. Yet recently, lacrosse in southern states has shown continuous growth, says head coach Jeff Eccles. But the difference in culture isn't just between the north and the south. 
It's within the club itself. When I uh, became the head coach this past summer, one of the commitments that I made to the team was that we were going to run this team like it's a varsity sport. And I told the guys from day one it was going to be like that. But for players like David Escott, the classification doesn't even matter. I'm not going to go play varsity football for LSU or anything like that, so I play lacrosse. I want to compete as long as I can at the highest level that I can, so I'm going to compete until, I'm, until my four years are up. And for now, the club level is more than enough. Morgan Beard, Tiger TV Sports. LSU Tigers! The first was a game winner against Arkansas on this very field. And now Traven Doral and Anthony Jennings are showing what began in 2013 has carried itself over to 2014 as the duo have already connected for four touchdowns in just two games to start the season. Coach Cam preaches, you know, it doesn't just happen overnight. You know, you got to work at it. You know, you have to put in the work to get some out of it. Yeah, I mean, we always, you know, talked about, you know, doing great things out here on Saturdays and, uh, you know, just putting in hard work during the offseason. I know I like what he's, what he's doing. Uh, just putting the ball up there, knowing he's going to come down with it is a great confidence boost for me. And Doral has been producing early and often with 291 receiving yards in the first two games of the season. The most of any Tiger in LSU history. Yet he maintains his early season success is only a byproduct of everyone else around him. But I can't take all the credit. You know, Anthony's doing a great job of putting the ball where I need it to be. And Anthony's doing a great job leading us. And Jennings isn't taking the credit either. Uh, and I can't take any credit from, um, for myself, so um, hey, everybody around me is helping me do those things and um, you know, just trying to keep, keep it going. Regardless, Jennings and Doral are making history one play at a time, including the 94-yard touchdown against Sam Houston State. I wasn't really thinking about it during the game, but um, after I came off the field, uh, you know, they told me that probably, it was a record. And for Doral, all 13 of his career receptions have gone for either a first down or a touchdown, which makes one wonder. Will he ever have just a regular catch? <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. You know I, I can't really say I will or I won't. You know, I'm just trying to make plays whenever I get the ball. Now Jennings and Doral will try to make it three for three with touchdowns in Tiger Stadium between the two this week against ULM. Reporting for Tiger TV Sports, I'm Morgan Beard.